I said, I'm fixing to tell you some stuff that basically you probably already know, but I'm going to wash you with this, <clears throat> which comes right from the Word of God, to, to empower us, to make us more victorious, to make us realize the value of speaking life. Right. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Right. And those that love it, love what? We love life. We're going to eat the fruit of it. And so I'm just saying that as my mother, who was a good Methodist, used to say to me, Deanne, if you can't say anything good, don't say anything at all. Well, that eliminated quite a lot of my conversation. I just have to say that. So anyway, but <clears throat> I realize that uh, we, we live, we live because the word of God has carries with it a vibration that elevates us above sickness and disease and poverty and lack. Remember, we've spent a whole, we've spent months talking about uh, the value of quantum physics and what it has taught us about, about the, the words and thoughts have vibrations. Well, that just affirms to us exactly what the, what the Word of God says, which is, do you know that people who live below the vibration of 200, and this is just a little recap, if you are anxious or angry or depressed or miserable, and it's, it's below 200, and those kinds of vibrations affect your immune system. Do you know, now I just, I just heard this this week and I loved it, do you know that when you give someone a compliment, when you speak life, when you say something kind to someone, that it elevates their serotonin? And serotonin is that chemical in our blood that all these antidepressant drugs are trying to elevate. It makes, it is the feel good chemical in your body, serotonin. So when we give a compliment, when we are kind, when we speak life out of our mouth, we are improving the serotonin level, the immune level, the health of that person that you're speaking it to, as well as it bounces back on you, and it improves your well-being, your sense of lightness, and it affects your immune system. And so I was thinking, you know, I've always kind of had this philosophy. I really wasn't worried very much about family gatherings at when there was the total screw-down lockdown because of COVID, because I just said, how can how can sickness and disease operate in love, in environment of love? See love? And I think, and lots of times, that's when you see somebody at a family gathering. You look good, guys. You look, Cole, you look really good. Have you, have you lost weight? Well, no. And then he tells you how he's just got a new shirt and it covers. I said, good on. Just wear that every day. Anyway, so when we, when we compliment people, we elevate their serotonin. Do you know that if the, all the Christians would start elevating everybody's serotonin, that we would put the pharmaceutical companies out of business? Nobody would have to take Paxil or Buspar or all those things. And, and, and I'm not speaking against that. I'm just saying there's a better way. Don't, wouldn't you say that? Anyway, and... and Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And, and that is an important thing for us to remember because when we're speaking the word of God, we're speaking life. Now, here is what I want. I, that, now, that's just a little, this is what I've come to talk about down here. But this is the foundation for this in the word. And that is, you remember when uh, we had the lesson on the sower sows the word? That's in Matthew, what, 13? In Mark 4, anyway, the sower sows the word. But before he sows the word, he says, take heed what you hear. Now, King James, I think, says take heed. But there are other translations that say take heed, take care of what you hear. Now, that doesn't just mean what you hear other people say. It's what you are saying on the inside of yourself. 
take heed what you're listening to. Take heed, are you speaking life on the inside of your thoughts or are you speaking death? Are you criticizing? Now, nobody in our family has that problem. And so I just told everybody before church that we, we had some little tiny ones at our house that were just uh, put on a regular show. And uh, so we decided, Don and I decided the next day that we wouldn't talk about it. Because if you talk about it, you might uh, be paying too much attention to it. Because that's not what we want to manifest, is it? More of that? I don't think so. Anyway, so take care what you hear. Pay attention to what you're thinking about when you're not thinking about what you're thinking about. Be consciously aware and begin to be awake. Awake, and that's my job, is to wake us up and to help us understand the value of, of self-awareness, our self-talk. Our self-talk can make us sick. And just think how negative that, I mean, just think of everybody's immune system going down when you're not speaking kind. Yeah, yeah. Be aware what you listen to because the word is, has powerful, and we're either going to get fixed 30, 60, or 100% uh, return. So this, so I'm going to help us this morning by telling us what not to listen to. Do you love it? Yes. Not. Listen, not. Don't listen to this. And the, one of the most, because what the ultimate goal in this process is that you would, we would put our attention on the word of God and our intention. What is your intention? I mean, that's another word for destiny. I, I, I thought that's how God explained it to me. And that being the fact that God has a plan. God has a destiny. He has intended some things for us. So let's, let's understand what he has intended for us, and let's focus on that. Well, how are we going to focus on that if we're focusing on a whole bunch of other stuff, which I'm fixing to tell you? Do not put your attention on what you're missing. And that can be any, maybe, uh, <clears throat> just think, think about what we, we're all through our life, we're, we concentrate on what, what, we're, what we're missing. Well, we need this. Well, we need that. Well, we don't have enough of this. And we don't have enough of that. And this guy didn't come and fix the refrigerator like he said he was going. I'm missing somebody to come and fix stuff. Missing, missing, missing. Well, if you're concentrated, if your vibration, if your internal clock, is talking about what you're missing, guess what you're going to manifest? More missing. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. So the idea that you, and for many, many years, because we were born again in that charismatic renewal, we, we came right into the Tulsa faith movement. So you, And a whole bunch was said about uh, what you say. You get what you say. No, you get what you think. You get what you think. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, I mean the heart, the, the whole boundary of your life is set up by what you think and what you say. So I messed up for quite a long time because I thought if I didn't say it, you know, Mother said, if you can't say anything, Mother should have said, Deanne, if you don't stop thinking what you're thinking, you're going to get more of what you're thinking. So we don't want to do that, do we? Okay, so we're not going to think about what we're missing. What's lacking? No, we're going to set our intention. What is your intention? What do you intend to see God do for you according to his word. Then the next thing is, we're not going to concentrate on what is. Because what is is seen. Where does the creative power originate from? What is not seen? What is unseen? The realm of the spirit. The, that is, hello, my brother. Yes, come on in. 
anyway, the thing about it is, is that if you're focused on what is, you're focused on what is seen. And if you're focused on what is seen, you may you might want to change what is seen. I do. So you can't focus on it. You have to focus on what is God's word. With it, and, and I will tell you this. This is a challenge if you are if you are suffering a great deal. I do, I do get that. If you are sick, 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 it is challenging not to focus on what is. But I think we need a practice on things that we that are a little bit smaller while we're healthy. Every time you're healthy, you need to practice intentionally on understanding the value of God's word to keep us whole. Because you know what? Now, this we were not allowed to do at home. Well, gee, I, I have a little tickle in my throat. Well, I bet that means I'm gonna. It's gonna. I'm gonna have a runny nose tomorrow. Well, if I have a runny nose tomorrow, I'll bet by Friday I'll have to miss work. Don't ever do that. Because what we're learning about is, if we would not focus, just it's not. It's not a denial that it's there. It's a denial that it has the right to progress. So don't, don't anticipate. Don't anticipate. We have kids that don't go to school because they're anticipating they're getting sick. And there's so much sickness right now, you have to be very careful about that. But we can go ahead and put the word of God in the people that we have relationships with so they can anticipate Right now, it's not so good, but you know what God's word says? God's word says that by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. We were healed. And so we're going to tuck that scripture in our hearts. And big people will do that too. Now here, now I just have to say, you are not, and I am not, going to focus on what always has been. If you have some generational issues, I'm sure nobody in here does have any generational issues. And really, these gathering times at Christmas and Thanksgiving, it's a time when you say, well, she acts just like her dad. Now, do we, do we want to put that on some, somebody? That, that just because that has been, or the grandpa. In fact, we were talking about where does hair loss come from? quote unquote genetically it's supposed to come from your mother's uh, father right I don't know anyway so that but we're just talking about these little things are subtle but we don't have to live I mean you are born again speaking the word of God vibrating internally with his thoughts so you have the power to live with the intention the expectation that you are going to receive what you're focused on in your heart and in your mind, and in your soul, and with all your strength, you're going to hang on to that. Whoa. This is, this is hopeful. This is hopeful. And so, if, we, if you have heart disease in your family, which we did, not in this generation, in Jesus' name, but if you're not careful, you can, you were, when you were born again, you are a new creation. You have a new DNA. You have a new bloodline. All we have to do is appropriate it. It doesn't come <clears throat> without some kind of faith appropriation. So get on the word. And then I, this, this is so great. Do not focus on what others' expectations of you are. Do you know that other people's evaluation of you do not define you? What somebody else thinks of you does not define you. It defines them. They said it, but it doesn't need to define you. So as we move outside of the box of our history, what always was, what is and what we're missing, if we begin to speak in anticipation of that, we're going to seem a little bit, um, 
well, we're not going to be taken quote unquote seriously. I don't care if I'm taken seriously or not. What I, what I care about, does God take me seriously? We are called to manifest the kingdom of God, the glory of God. So what comes out of our mouth is one big show off of God. And so if we will not let others' expectations, say I'm not. That doesn't define me. Doesn't define me. It defines them. And if you begin to be worried about, if you don't like the way they've defined you, you're in the same category as the definition they've said to you. So don't define them. Whomever you define, whomever you judge, uh, that, that doesn't define them. It defines you. And so we, we don't want to live, we don't want to reap that kind of sowing of uh, judgments. So I just think that this is brilliant. This is brilliant. All right. Now, I didn't, it wasn't, it wasn't mine originally. But I, I thought this was mine originally. <laughs> These I read. And I just thought it was so brilliant. It fed along everything that I'm trying. I'm trying to move out. of. Listen, what is my intention? What do you want to manifest in the kingdom of God? What is God wired you for? You know that little acorn we've been talking about? Listen, that acorn has everything that's in the, the, total, the total tree, from its height to the way it holds on to its leaves, how it operates, how, what its strength is. Listen, you, everything, that little hidden unit of energy that God produced in the beginning through creation of God in your life, you have everything you need, everything you need, everything you need. Everything you need. Yes. What? And so these, some of these ideas you have, the desires you have, it's all about part of being wired by God in the beginning. And I, from the very beginning, I really, I wanted to be a nurse. So before I was saved, I really wanted to see people get well. So, but that, that didn't, uh, I didn't have the brain power effort to make that happen. <laughs> but when I got saved, what, it, what is in my, what am I intended to manifest? Healing. The, heal the healing goodness of God. I love, I, I had a chance to see that happen this week. I want I want to see it. That's my intention. So if I have to shut down all this other stuff, what's missing in my life? What is in my life? <laughs> you know, I've always said if I could just get rid of a couple of people, I could really be great for God. <laughs> but that's not, that's not. Oh, it is. I only, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Right. Anyway. And then what has always been, if I, if I can move away, and as Steph says, it's a journey. This is just a journey. If I can get out of that a little bit more, then guess what the likelihood has happened, would happen? If I pray for the sick, they will recover. You can't be full of all that stuff, one through four, and pray the prayer of faith in love. So I'm helping us. And so you're going to live by the power of your tongue, life or death. Choose life. Amen. Amen.